This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by the Virginia Education Association. An investment in teachers today will pay dividends tomorrow. Dignity Memorial. The Dignity Network provides professional and compassionate funeral, memorial, cremation, and cemetery services throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association for jobs, the economy, and public health committed to advancing health and economic opportunity for all Virginians. Virginia Tourism Corporation, promoting why Virginia is for lovers, lovers of wine and craft beers, the outdoors, beaches, history, music, and more. Fall in love with Virginia at virginia.org. Additional support provided by these sponsors. and by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you. Welcome to This Week in Richmond. You might be interested to know that the General Assembly has more than two dozen commissions. We're going to give you a screenshot of the main homepage of the commissions. You'll find ones that are dealing with business, with energy, with regulatory, with transportation. And then you find that there are four on history. And today's show is going to feature three of those. And we welcome as our first guest, Senator Jennifer McClellan, who served over a decade in the House of Delegates and now several years already in the Senate representing parts of metropolitan Richmond, Richmond and surrounding counties yeah. that are in your district. And we welcome you as the chair of the Martin Luther King Memorial Commission and are interested in your telling the viewers about anything that the commission's doing and then also particularly about a monument that's in the plans. Absolutely, David. Thank you for, for having me. And the commission is very, very busy. Um, as you know, this year, 2018, was the 50th anniversary of Dr. Yes. King's assassination. Uh, so we've spent the, the past year commemorating um, his death. And we decided, rather than doing an event that focused on April 4th, we wanted to really focus on Dr. King's ties to Virginia. Um, a lot of people don't know he visited Virginia, you know, a couple dozen times between 1956 and 1950, uh, 1956 and 1967. So we're doing a series of community conversations in each locality he visited, talking about why was he there, what was happening, but more importantly, where are we in that community today and achieving his vision of a beloved community, and where do we go from here, which was a question he was really focused on in the last year of his life. You know, that uh, website is, is phenomenal with all the information it has, and we'll have the, the address up as well as some scenes that people will see. It, it was interesting, as I was refreshing my memory on that, that that fateful week in which Martin Luther King went to Memphis was the time he was really scheduled to be here in Virginia. He, he was. He had scheduled a, a three-day tour from March 28th to March 30th, 1967 uh, through Virginia as part of the People to People campaign that right. was going to culminate in another March on Washington that August. Um, he was mainly going to be in the, in the Tidewater area. And then when he got the call about what was happening in, in Memphis with the uh, sanitation worker strike, uh, he decided to go there instead. You know, we were talking as the show was about ready to begin that the, that the commission was st established way back in 1992. I mean, yes. the, the holiday back in the 1980s, then the commission. So the commission has been around a long time. It has. Uh, Billy Robinson, uh, Delegate Billy Robinson was the first chair and he, he put the commission uh, in place through legislation. Um, and our charge really is to study and, and keep alive Dr. King's life and legacy, but not just to talk about the history, which is very important, but to talk about uh, contemporary events uh, through the lens of Dr. King's work. So um, we've done a number of, of things. Uh, we've kind of become the lead agency commemorating uh, significant events in African-American history. So we led the commemoration of Brown versus Board, 
the uh, 50th anniversary of the school closings, the sesquicentennial of the Emancipation Proclamation, um, Dr. King's assassination. Uh, next year, we're looking at a project on uh, uh, compiling information on lynchings in Virginia. Um, we're making sure that as we commemorate the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, that the contributions of black suffragettes are, are recognized and included. So, uh, but we always bring it forward to why is this still relevant today? Right. And how does this impact play out in public policy debates today? And uh, scheduling conversations around the Commonwealth, too, to get people involved in talking with each other. Yes. And I think that's certainly an important part of what you've been doing. It is. We've done seven. Uh, we started here in Richmond. Um, and uh, we've got five. And actually, I just discovered yesterday that um, an a new locality we didn't realize Dr. King had visited, but um, he did on a swing through the 4th Congressional District in 1992. Um, we knew he went to Hopewell and Dinwiddie. I'm sorry, we knew he went to Hopewell, Petersburg. We just discovered Dinwiddie, so uh, we're now adding that to our agenda. Excellent, excellent. Well, tell our viewers that we're having the conversation toward the end of August, mm -hmm. and they're seeing this show in early September, but there are certainly important things that are happening this month in September and on yes. throughout the year. Yes, so our next King, King in Virginia Beloved Community Conversation is on September 26th at Hampton University, uh, which is where he spoke, uh, pretty close to the date when he spoke. Um, all of these are from 6 to 8. They are all going to be live streamed on our Facebook page, and then we archive the video both on the Facebook page and on our website. Um, and then the next one is scheduled uh, tentatively for October 30th in Norfolk. And then hopefully by the time viewers see this, we will have scheduled all of the remaining conversations. There's also some plans and discussion underway about a monument. Yes. <laughs> and I think we certainly want you to talk about that. Absolutely. So back in 2011, uh, we started to talk about how do we want to commemorate the sesquicentennial of the Emancipation Proclamation. So we did a series of town hall meetings across the Commonwealth to talk about that and, and decided that uh, we wanted to do a monument. Uh, so the 2012 budget authorized uh, this monument uh, to, to commemorate uh, emancipation and freedom, uh, not just the moment of emancipation. Um, we went through several rounds of RFPs and finally decided on a few years ago a, a design by an artist named Jay Warren that depicts a, a representative newly freed slave family. Um, but we again wanted it to be more than just the moment of emancipation. Um, our town hall meeting showed you really need to focus on acts of self liberation, re rebellion, and resistance. And so on the base of the monument, on one side we will, will depict five African American Virginians who fought against slavery. Um, and then on the other side, because just once you ended slavery with the 13th Amendment, you did not have equality for everyone, and the struggle for equality still continues today. So on the other side, we're depicting five African-American Virginians who fought for equality uh, post-emancipation up through the 1970s. And again, we had to have a cutoff somewhere. So um, we had another series of town hall meetings with public nominations. We had about 100 people nominated. We focused on people who don't already have a monument. Um, and we wanted geographic diversity. We wanted men and women. Um, so we're very proud of the, the 10 that we selected. Uh, it'll be on Browns Island, and if all goes well, we will be finished and unveiling it in November of 2019. Oh, well, that's, that's an exciting date to yes. be <laughs> working toward, it yes. is. Now, for folks of my generation, and then folks of your generation, and then for those of your children's generation, these are strange times that we're mm -hmm. living in right now. Yes. And while from my generation's side, we would want to see this happen in your generation, but I think for the generation coming along, with all the, the strife that we've seen in Virginia, 
created, I think, by a minority of, of people in Charlottesville and other places. It's, we, we need to be reminded of uh, what the beloved community can be. Yes, we do. And um, I think that's really, it's interesting that both the beloved community conversations and the town hall meetings about our monuments um, were unfolding sort of in, in these times. Um, we actually had a town hall meeting in Charlottesville a week after uh, oh, wow. the Unite the Right uh, rally. And so, um, and our second beloved community was in Charlottesville at UVA where Dr. King spoke in March of 1962. So it's a very timely conversation um, that, that, that we are having, but um, one of the things we want to make sure is it's not just a one-time conversation and then we're done. Uh, we will issue um, an annual report at the end of the year, or I guess in the beginning of next year, where we'll kind of summarize the, the town hall meetings, what the broad themes were, and some key takeaways on sort of how do we uh, move forward in achieving the beloved community. So the, the, the challenge and the struggle continues. Yes. It does. Yes. I think as, as people, again, get on that website, and there's one link where they can see the, the members of the commission. Yes. And it's, it's a diverse group of legislators. It is. From your chamber and from the House, from both political parties, but, but all working together to try to accomplish these goals. Yes, yes. And, and um, m pretty much all parts of the, of the Commonwealth um, and, and our community members that are appointed by the House and the Senate, um, we have, we have some who were part of the civil rights movement, and so it's really good to have their perspectives uh, today as we continue Dr. King's work. So in our closing minute or so, what, um, again, we got this opportunity coming up in, in September. You, you spoke of Browns Island and what will be happening yes, in the yes. goal in 2019. What other message would you want to give to our viewers? Well, I think, uh, to be honest, the key one is we're fundraising for the monument. Um, about half of it is paid for uh, by the state, but we really want community buy-in. And so if, if you're interested in making a, a tax-deductible donation, there's information on that uh, on our website. We also hope to get around the Commonwealth and remind people this is not a Richmond monument. This is a Virginia monument. It is everyone's monument. We've got people on there from Harrisonburg to Tidewater. And so um, keep your eyes on our website and, and our Facebook page for these, these projects. But this is only a, a fraction of what we're yes, doing. Yes. So just check back regularly. Um, you can follow us on, on Facebook and, and see what all we're up to. And when there are meetings of the commission, they are fully announced, wide open to the public. Exactly. And and probably with many of these commissions, I would say, unfortunately, very few of the public come to commission meetings. That's and so true. We would, we would hope that interested people would say, oh, the, this commission, yeah. that commission's meeting, and they would come. And our next one will be at the beginning of December. We don't have a date yet, but we're going we're gonna to see life-size renderings of our monument um, at, that, at that meeting. So it's going to be exciting. Senator McClellan, Chair of the MLK Commission. We thank you and ask our viewers just to give us a moment and we'll have guests with us from the World War I and World War II commissions, two other historical commissions. Thank you very much. Thank you. As we welcome our viewers back, we welcome two guests who are here representing the World War I and World War II commissions, although you were not in either of those wars. But we appreciate your being on. Clay Mountcastle from director of the Virginia War Memorial and a member of that commission, Steve Combs, deputy commissioner in the Virginia Department of Veteran Services, working also on that commission along with Commissioner Newby. And the commissions met, we're, we're talk, having this conversation in August, our viewers are seeing it now, it's September as they're seeing it, but tremendous number of things that were decided in your meeting and reported on your meeting, things that are happening in the coming months in the Commonwealth, both World War I and World War II. Uh, you were Army and you were Air Force, you are both veterans, mm -hmm. but uh, we're talking about wars that, that predate you by, by decades. 
So what, what would you want to tell our viewers about what is happening in the World War I and World War II commissions that meet together almost as one, one big commission? Sure. So a lot of great discussion today about the preparations for November 11th. Of course, November 11th, 2018 is the 100th anniversary of the armistice that ended World War I and Clay Mountcastle and his team at the Virginia War Memorial are very much a part of the effort to uh, do the ceremony out at uh, the Virginia's World War uh, I commemoration, centennial commemoration, and uh, Veterans Day ceremony uh, out at Bird Park at the Carillon, which is Virginia's World War I commemoration memorial. You know, it was, was interesting, and Clay, tell us something about what's planned, because I was hearing this morning, and probably a lot of our viewers might not know, that's the World War I monument that's here. Exactly. We get that question a lot at the Virginia War Memorial when people come out and visit the Shrine of Memory at the current memorial. It begins with World War II and names of Virginians that died in World War II and then carries on through Korea, Vietnam. And sometimes folks will ask us, well, where are the World War I names? Where, where are the names of Virginians that you know, gave the ultimate sacrifice in World War I? And we have to tell them it's located out at the Carillon and Bird Park. So that was just a decision that made a lot of sense to us, was to move this very important ceremony. Uh, obviously, our Veterans Day observance, observance every year is important. It's one of our bigger events at the War Memorial. But this year in particular, being at the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I, we thought it would be much more appropriate to have our ceremony held out uh, at Dogwood Dell in the shadow of the Carillon, which is the Commonwealth's memorial to World War I. And hopefully, hopefully, have it uh, serve as a bit of uh, reintroduction to the Carillon for folks that have been there before but kind of forgot about the purpose right, of the Carillon, right. uh, but also for, for many folks that have never been there before, have it be a, a grand introduction uh, to that monument for them and having them come out and see it for the first time. Very nice. So what, now there's work going on at the War Memorial expansion that's mm -hmm. going to enable you to have larger groups and, Correct. and Plenty of parking over there. Sure. What, what else is happening at the War Memorial? Well, we like to think that not only are we expanding in size, but we're also expanding in our capability to serve the entire Commonwealth uh, as its War Memorial. So what we're doing is we're building larger lecture facilities, uh, as you mentioned, a greater parking capacity. We're building a distance education studio, which will allow us to broadcast our education programming throughout the Commonwealth, try and get it in every classroom, throughout the state and really try and tell people the what and why and how behind the names that we honor here at the Virginia War Memorial. It's, it's one thing to, to honor those names and to have those names etched in glass and stone, but we think it's more important to then try and explain to every Virginian why those names are there and how they ended up there. So this expansion we're very excited about. We just think that when it's completed in about a year, um, we will truly be uh, a war memorial for the entire state, that, uh, one that can really uh, achieve our mission of honoring the fallen and educating the Commonwealth. So Steve, when we get beyond that November important date, what else is underway for the World War I, World War II commissions? So just at today's uh, meeting of the World War I and World War II Memorial Commission, there was discussion about the 75th anniversary of D-Day, June 6, 1944. Uh, of course, we have the D-Day, National D-Day Memorial here in Bedford, Virginia, and uh, April Cheek Messier, who is on the Virginia War Memorial Board, and her team are already hard at work planning for that, and uh, what we heard this morning, just some really neat stuff to invite all veterans, but especially to honor the World War II veterans and those that were at Normandy and D-Day, uh, and just some of the things they have planned included a flyover, I think they said, Clay, about a dozen aircraft, uh, World War II aircraft lined up so far for that. And uh, then another partner a museum with us is the MacArthur Memorial down in Norfolk. And they're looking forward to 2020 and the 75th anniversary of the ending of World War II in the Pacific. And uh, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag on what they're planning, but they've got some neat stuff in mind for that one. So not only do you have World War I 100th anniversary, but the 75th anniversary of World War II and a lot going on. And of course, uh, don't forget the Profiles of Honor Tour sponsored by the World War I and World War II uh, Commemoration Commission uh, that um, travels around the state and brings a uh, history of the war um, to different venues across the Commonwealth. That's, that's the mobile unit? That's, that's the mobile right. unit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one activity that the commission has 
taken the lead on and worked in conjunction with uh, those of us at the War Memorial are putting on teachers institutes over the course of the last few summers mm -hmm. where we bring teachers from around the state into various institutes, um, seminar settings, and try and assist them in building their own uh, lesson plans and ideas for teaching the history of World War II primarily, but also World War I. And so we've conducted those over the past few summers. They've been very well received, well attended throughout the state. And we talked about looking forward to next summer as well as to really trying to bring in as many teachers as we can, offer them some great ideas, some great discussion on how to present these very uh, sometimes complicated, sometimes complex, mm -hmm. but there's just so much. There's so much to be taught and learned about World War One and World War II that sometimes teachers are just thinking, how can I present it in the best way, in the most effective way? And that's what these uh, institutes are all about. So we're looking forward to conducting another round of these those teacher institutes next summer um, throughout the state. I know the, wor the work that you do, the work that Veteran Services does, you're, you're working to, to honor veterans and those mm -hmm. who made the, particularly made the ultimate sacrifice, but also working to help people lest they forget. Yeah, absolutely. And to, that, that as, as has been said many times, history has a way of repeating itself mm -hmm. unless we know the lessons from the right. past. And what we've learned uh, at the War Memorial is that the, the process of memorialization needs to be active. It, it, right. it can't be a, pra a passive process where you just put up a monument and you expect people to, to come out on their own and see it. If we truly want people to remember and to not forget, we have to have an active slot of programs. We have to have events throughout the year that give people a reason to remember. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things going on in people's lives. There's a lot of right. things on their to-do right. list. So we have to give them an opportunity to find a way to remember and to think about, you know, not only what has happened, but what has been the overall effect on not only ourselves, but the state as a whole. And so that's what we try and do. We try and fill the calendar with, whether it's events, seminars, uh, and partner with other uh, organizations like the Commission and the National D-Day um, Memorial so that, you know, we can try and get people aware of what's happening and give them a reason to come out and, and think about it and talk about it. Steve, what else do you want to tell our viewers about what's happening either on these commissions or in veteran services? Well, it's, uh, it really is a period and a year of anniversaries. So not only do we have the 100th anniversary of the U.S. involvement in World War I and the 75th in World War II, uh, this is the 50th anniversary of the period of U.S. involvement in Vietnam. And uh, DVS and the Virginia War Memorial are partners with the DOD Vietnam 50th Commemoration Commission, uh, which is recognizing Vietnam veterans, and these are folks who served between November 55 and May of 75. So this is a, a 20 year span of anniversaries wow. going on. Yes. So we'll be recognizing our Vietnam veterans, well we always do, but as part of the commemoration through 2025. And uh, so as a partner, one of the, the neat things is that uh, all Vietnam veterans who served during that period regardless of branch of service or where they serve, didn't have to be in country, are considered Vietnam veterans and we want to honor and thank them. And these Vietnam veterans can come to the Virginia War Memorial or any of our 31 DVS <coughs> benefits offices and all the listing is on our website at dvs.virginia.gov. Uh, so we can honor and thank them and personally present a Vietnam veteran lapel pin uh, for all these mm. veterans. Uh, just as a way of saying thank you on behalf of the nation and the Commonwealth. Uh, that's that's one I have not heard about. So I'm glad glad that you mentioned that. And and Clay, what what else would you want to say about what's happening at the War Memorial or what you see happening sure. as uh, the expansion takes place? Um, what I see happening is uh, just when people arrive at the War Memorial um, and they walk around. Many of them have never been there before. Um, by the time they leave, uh, they're very impressed with what they've seen. Um, they almost, you know, wonder why they hadn't hadn't been there before. Right. Um, and they're very excited about what we have going on in the future because they they, it's easy to understand our mission once you visited the War Memorial and see that we're working very hard uh, to allow people to never forget those that made the ultimate sacrifice and try and gain a real appreciation for what it is they did and why they did it and what it's meant for all of us. And so. Uh, we're seeing a lot of excitement um, when people come and see all of our programming and see what we have to offer. 
Um, we see uh, a lot of curiosity about, you know, just people's general history, you know, th their own personal stories, you know, uh, of service. And so it, it's interesting to see our visitors make that connection between their own particular service, whether they're a veteran themselves or perhaps they had a father who served in the military, or they had a mother who served in the Persian Gulf War, to make those personal connections and then see it in the larger scope. And so over the course of the past year, it's been great to see that curiosity peaked uh, when people visit the Memorial. I want to thank you both for being on This Week in Richmond. We need to have you back again as things move forward. But thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for thank having you. us. Thank you. This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by the Virginia Education Association. An investment in teachers today will pay dividends tomorrow. Dignity Memorial. The Dignity Network provides professional and compassionate funeral, memorial, cremation, and cemetery services throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association for jobs, the economy, and public health. Virginia Tourism Corporation, promoting why Virginia is for lovers, lovers of wine and craft beers, the outdoors, beaches, history, music, and more. Fall in love with Virginia at virginia.org. Additional support provided by these sponsors. And by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you.